I'm Hongin Dai, or you can call me Hai Dai, uh, just like the, this ID uh, for short. And uh, today I want to share about how uh, my team, the SOL team, to uh, do several optimization on uh, Solidity, on EO, and it wasn't via the uh, LLVM framework. So uh, here she is our uh, agenda. We have a uh, full session to uh, talk about that. First is the roadmap and how SOL works. And then we will uh, just mention uh, just a little uh, UO optimizer and LVN optimizer. Then we want to introduce a very experimental um, a new mechanism to do some uh, static analysis and uh, feedback dirty optimization. Okay. So uh, let's talk about our uh, roadmap first. Uh, actually, this whole project is start from uh, uh, I think last year, the April Fools, and actually we has do lots of stuff on uh, to create a new uh, language extension for a solidity called uh, Liti. Uh, if you if you remember, we have to talk about that on the uh, DevCon five and. After the tool, we want to uh, just more focus on some uh, optimization research because uh, we, we believe that the uh, smart contract for uh, blockchain will become more and more popular. So uh, if the uh, engineer to, who, who is writing the smart contract cannot, uh, uh, we, we want to help them that they don't need to uh, really care about the detailed code chain about the uh, performance or the code size, we want to uh, leverage lots of the optimization skill and to uh, help them to generate more uh, small size uh, by code. So uh, here is our uh, our uh, the start point, and and after we decide we want to use the LVN uh, as our infrastructure, uh, we want to choose and uh, that's one front end and one back end. Uh, which is the front end is we, we choose the uh, solidity language because I believe it's the most popular smart contract language in the world. So we choose the uh, solidity. And then uh, for the back end, I, I believe that the solidity compiler has to do uh, very great work to uh, generate the EVM BIPOL very efficiently. So we just want to create a new or choose a new uh, target back end. So uh, that's why we choose the solidity and it wasn't for the first. And then uh, we go go to the uh, the audio one, the uh, really uh, uh, the very first release. That is, and um, we want to uh, create a very small uh, demo, uh, which is just I believe everyone has used this library called Safe Mass, and uh, we just uh, do very little grammar. Uh, just you can see here if else or uh, revert require and uh, very limited uh, in the just code. But uh, before the DevCon 5, uh, we want to uh, just uh, join the community and we want to talk uh, to the uh, Solidity team to uh, ask for the more uh, conversation about the uh, Ewason or, or something like that. So in this two version, we focus on uh, how to compile a, a ERC20 smart contract and we want to show uh, our SOL has the ability can uh, we can just support the constructor and we can deploy the uh, Ewason bytecode to the uh, Ethereum Ewason testnet. And actually we, uh, we we just finish that and and we have a very good conversation between uh, us and the uh, uh, team. And uh, after this event, I, I believe this is very uh, a key event because uh, after our discussion, we found that, uh, that uh, like, uh, I remember that the Alice told us there is another project called Solan, and they they also do the, the uh, I think just the same thing, just compile the uh, solidity into uh, it wasn't or into the uh, subtract. So uh, we just change our goal from uh, supporting the solidity front end, uh, just uh, instead of uh, oh, sorry, we we want to support the evil front end instead of the solidity. So. Uh, Michael mentioned uh, yesterday, actually the SOL now can pass, uh, I think it's 80% of the test suite from the uh, LibreUO. And I want to, uh, the SOL want to uh, accept lots of UO bytecode, which is generated by the uh, SOLC compiler. And uh, we apply uh, the LVM building uh, optimization 
options into the whole uh, whole code gen and whole uh, by code generation. And also, we also support the EVM LVM as our EVM backend. So now the SOL uh, can support a very limited uh, solitary front end. And I, I think uh, almost the, the UO front end. And we have two backend. One is the uh, EWASM backend, and another is the uh, EVM LVM backend. Okay. So uh, here is something uh, we, we doesn't support now, uh, just like uh, balance or self-balance, something like this. And uh, we will uh, just keep going to finish this uh, unimplemented uh, in instructions uh, just uh, a few months later. Okay. So what is our future roadmap or future goal? That is, we want to fully support the uh, uh, UO5N. And uh, uh, yesterday that, uh, we found that it is a very good uh, extension called the uh, UO Plus, and I, I believe if there are some features that's very, uh, uh, very interesting, uh, so we will also uh, uh, add support of the UO Plus after we finish the uh, uh, UO Fun M. And we found found that uh, there are some very interesting things less. Uh, Actually, traditional optimization uh, applies on the uh, EWASM uh, may not be the uh, best choice for the uh, for the real world because uh, uh, when we deploy a smart contract on on Ethereum, we will uh, we will very care about the code size rather than the efficiency because um, uh, uh, the the code size will take lots of storage. So uh, I believe it's is more expensive than the uh, than the native computer. Okay, so that's uh, the second goal we want to achieve. And the third one is uh, actually we have uh, several uh, optimize version paths in our uh, optimizer, and we will discuss that later. Okay, so that's our uh, roadmap from uh, the past, from the current, and the future. Okay. Now, uh, I want to talk about how uh, SOL work, uh, works. So the first thing is that um, we accept the uh, contract, which is right, right in uh, Solidity language. And when you get a Solidity, Solidity contract, you can just uh, bypass it into the SOLC and with the uh, minimize IR and minimize IR optimized. And then you can get a, a, a ultimate, uh, ultimate UO bytecode. And at this stage, uh, we accept this uh, UO uh, smart contract into our compiler. And if you want to see how uh, you want to get the uh, deploy Deployer plus the runtime. Uh, you, you just uh, bypass this your contract, and we will give you the uh, C that was. But if you want to um, know what is the detail of the uh, runtime by code, uh, you have to remove the outside uh, part of the your object because the outside part is the constructor and 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 some something that. Uh, uh, it's just a, a, a wrapper of the outside. So, so you have to remove the, the UO object outside, uh, the outside UO object first, and then just uh, bypass the, the remaining part to our compiler, and you can get the runtime uh, Watson. So, uh, what is the detailed things that the SOL compiler do? The first thing is when we get the, the UO smart contract, the, uh, we will pass it and check the semantic and create our uh, own AST uh, in, in, in our uh, compiler pipeline. And the second thing is uh, we will consume this AST and uh, with our uh, code module, and then we will get the LVM module here. So at this stage, now we get lots of the LVM IR. Now there is no uh, UR anymore. So. Uh, each line of the your statement will just map into several line of the LVIR here. Okay. Now, when we get the LVM module here, and the next step is to use our backend. Our backend will just apply several uh, LVM optimization paths, and we will do lots of steps like uh, uh, like the bit swap because the uh, the EVM is a big Indian 
integer type and uh, the web assembly is the little Indian uh, integer type. So we, we need to do lots of the uh, conversion things. And then uh, after we finish lots of works now, the, the last step is uh, we will use our talking machine and linker to generate the, uh, it was a bytecode or the uh, EVNLV and .LV IR. Yeah, that's our, the whole internal process of uh, SOL works. Okay, so that's our, uh, that's my uh, second session to uh, just describe how uh, the SOL works. And the third part we want to just mention some uh, very different things about the UO optimizer and the LV optimizer. And the first thing is, uh, I, I think the, the rules between these two is, is very different because the, the UO optimizer actually is transformed from UO to UO. So uh, you can have very uh, high level information here and so, uh, for, uh, we will have uh, an example that the, the, the your optimizer can do lots of aggressive uh, elimination to uh, do the in, inline things to remove the function code. But when we go to the LV optimizer, uh, there is a big limitation for us because that we we just convert all of the UL statement into the LV IR statement so uh we will lose lots of the high level information first and the second thing is uh when we want to apply to generate to the uh, it wasn't back end we will uh need to add lowering integer like uh because the EVN has 256 bits uh, big Indian integer but the web assembly only support a 64 bit integer so we have to do lots of conversion and also uh, just the uh, bit swap I mentioned before. So uh, after we add the several things in our LVIR code, uh, it will be more hard to do some uh, analysis and to uh, reduce with some uh, very uh, heuristic rule. So uh, I will give you uh, more uh, details in the uh, example. Okay. So the first example is uh, we called the uh, a very uh, common uh, compiler optimization. That is uh, loop rolling or unrolling, which means uh, uh, here you have a contract with uh, a 10 element of array and we just write a for loop to fill uh, the every element with the, the uh, index. And uh, if you compile this small code to the native com computer, uh, for example, if you write uh, this algorithm in uh, you write this algorithm in uh, C++ and just compile it to the native, you will find that uh, there are no more for loop because all of the uh, uh, things will be converted into uh, array zero uh, equals array uh, assign uh, assign zero to assign your to the array zero. So it will just be 10 line of, of this statement. But uh, uh, in the UO optimizer, uh, you will find that actually you just keep the structure. So you will have a follow up here and uh, uh, each iteration will just uh, update the uh, storage value uh, once. So I, I, I think it's very great, but when we apply, uh, for example, we apply the LV optimizer with the O3 frag, and we will find that all of the loop is be eliminated because uh, in this stage, the LVN and the uh, Watson backend believe that uh, we just replace the loop with uh, lots of the uh, uh, constant, constant store uh, is more uh, efficiency, but Actually, in the uh, in the historian, I don't believe uh, I, I don't see it's a good idea because uh, if this loop become more larger, uh, if it's not from uh, zero to ten, it's from zero to a hundred or a thousand, then we will find the call size will glow than uh, than our expected. So uh, when we do the loop and rolling, we find the final uh, Watson uh, call size will be. Uh, about 3k, but the if we we disable the uh, loop loading, a uh, loop unloading, uh, we will get the uh, 2.5k uh, bytes here. 
So uh, this is the first very different thing that we have to be more careful when we uh, apply any uh, LVN optimization because uh, lots of the optimization is designed for the uh, native computer, not designed for uh, some uh, very special case. Okay. Uh, the second thing is uh, the inline. I believe that's a very good example that the UL uh, optimizer can do much better than, than the LV optimizer. Uh, the, uh, you can find this is the uh, DEFCON dash the uh, example that UL and is uh, uh, as stored here and we just call uh, array sum. And uh, in the array sum, we will call lots of the uh, array loads. So uh, after the uh, UL optimizer, Oh, sorry. Oh. I missed one slide here. Oh, okay. Uh, I missed one slide here, and I, I will I will give you the uh, a well moment. Let me check if if I can get it back now. For a moment. Okay. And um, uh, let me just pass it. Uh, copy and was on test. Uh, sorry. Yes, but copy. Oh, and wait a moment. Let me share another the screen here. Okay. Okay. So uh, you can find uh, if if we just uh, uh, sorry uh, I just go back. So uh, after the uh, your optimizer, then we will uh, just. Uh, convert this uh, this uh, uh, UO uh, to a very short one. Here you can find all of the function code is uh, all of the function code is be even that. So uh, there's a very uh, very uh, good things that uh, that's the uh, uh, UO optimizers do. But uh, when we go back to the uh, to the Oh, okay. To the uh, uh, to the LVN optimizer O3, then we, we will figure out that the array sum is be has been in light, but the array load has not been in light because uh, in the LVN optimizer we uh, figure out that uh, uh, the function body and the uh, basic block is uh, is larger than the inliner. So uh, the in another threshold, so uh, there will be uh, the so there will be only the uh, array sum has been in line, and the other one will not be in line. Okay, so that's very different between the LVN optimizer and the uh, and the uh, UO optimizer because um, uh, because LVN optimizer the inliner will has its own threshold, and we have to uh, do lots of the research and to figure out uh, which uh, threshold is good enough for the uh, it wasn't cost model. So that's the, the second things uh, we will uh, have to do more research here. And uh, the third one is the storage as a sample. So uh, I just create a new uh, integer storage and and uh, we will do uh, add ten and add ten twice. Okay, so. Uh, when the uh, contracts be compiled to the UO and after the UO optimizer, and you can find that uh, uh, there is the same thing like uh, the uh, function body, and you just uh, update the storage value twice, and that's the same thing with the uh, LV optimizer. Like uh, you can find that here is the add first to add 10 into uh, uh, this is a temporary variable uh, means the uh, the original story value and just store it oh here is a, a, a by swap don't worry about that and we call the uh, storage store just to uh, store the, uh, the after value back to uh, the storage 
Uh, but uh, we believe uh, if we can do a very trivial uh, optimization, which is uh, these two lines can be combined into one line, which is uh, I plus equal uh, 20. We don't need to do uh, just like um, two line of the uh, add and two line of the uh, storage updates. We, we can just uh, simplify the, the uh, statement into one line. Oh, that, that, that is uh, several things that we can do more uh, about uh, this case. Okay, so here is uh, three. Uh, here are three examples we we want to mention that uh, uh, both of uh, these two optimizer has uh, still has a lot of uh, research and 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 optimization uh, technology uh, we can do more. So uh, we want to uh, introduce the, the, the final part, which is uh, we, we do uh, research to uh, analyze the cost model. So uh, what is the motivation? This is motivation is like, uh, uh, I, I believe the gas cost is just like the energy consumption. Uh, if you run, if you run, uh, okay, if, if you run a very, very bad, uh, program on your cell phone, then your cell phone will eat more power. And if you write a very bad smart contract, then it will uh, eat gas. Uh, I think it's just equal. So uh, we apply a, a very, uh, I, we apply the, uh, the same uh, analysis and optimization, uh, just from some paper uh, to deal with the energy consumption. So we create a project called the GPS CAT, which means a general purpose uh, static cost analysis tool chain. Okay, it's just a very long name. And in this tool, we have a two phase tool chain. The first one is we, we don't uh, analyze this, the uh, UO directly, we analyze LVIR because uh, we can do lots of the uh, debug info, we can insert lots of debug info to help us to uh, to evaluate uh, the LVNIR cost equals to lots of the uh, web assembly instruction cost. So uh, we will uh, start from the LVNIR first. So when we get LVNIR, we can just uh, calculate it into a cost function. And then we will uh, use uh, up one solver to resolve this function to uh, figure out its score. Okay, so here is our uh, our total analysis the uh, uh, diagram. So uh, first of all, since we will uh, define some uh, assembly cost model, uh, something like if we add a number, it will take uh, let's just say a hundred or two hundred something like that, and all of the LVN IR bytecode will be uh, annotated with uh, debug info with the debug location because we want to know that uh, every LVN IR will be generated to uh, what kind of the uh, WebAssembly instruction. So the whole, whole uh, the, the top idea is like this. So uh, after we do lots of the annotation, we can give uh, uh, L, we can get the LVIR with block cost information. Then when we get this information, we, we need to have to uh, uh, to apply two framework from the outside. The first one is uh, we need to uh, extract the cost relationship. So we use the LVN to keto. And the second thing is after we have this this uh, causal relationship, we need, we have to apply the up one solving up one solver to uh, to calculate the the, the things. So uh, here is we we use uh, two external project to help us to do this. Okay. So after uh, we go through lots of things, now we can get uh, if we apply some optimization on the LVN IR then we can get a new score and a new formula. And we can calculate if we apply this, uh, the, the static analyst will tell us, well, your cost will be increased or decreased. Then we will we can just uh, adjust the, the threshold or uh, adjust the uh, optimization options to, to uh, help us to uh, create more, uh, more suitable uh, 
at the management phase for the uh, it wasn't cost model. Okay. So uh, I think I have uh, I think I have run of time. So uh, the the following slide is is just to mention how we uh, annotate the debug info uh, for the LVIR. Just like uh, we will say uh, each LVIR will map into which line and lowering it into the assembly, uh, the web assembly, then uh, we can just get a mapping relationship between uh, the, the load LVIR instruction will be do nothing, but the add will be uh, compared to three uh, instruction of the, the uh, web assembly. Then with this model, we can just say, we have a table to the, of the mapping relationship and we have the cost table, so we will know each LVIR is mapping to what kind of a cost, and we can uh, calculate the final basic block cost, and we will know the whole program, the whole cost of, of this smart contract when, when he just is queued. Okay, uh, I think that's my whole uh, whole talk about uh, the SOL and our uh, some something uh, about the uh, optimization. So uh, if uh, you, you are interested, you can go to this link to our uh, SOL repository to use them, or uh, you can uh, just, I, I, I believe Michael showed the video uh, yesterday. And if you are interested, actually we have, uh, because we, we have a uh, uh, need to uh, measure the, the, the bico uh, efficient and the bico uh, and the bio performance, so we create uh, our self own uh, Watson virtual machine to do uh, to do this. And if you're interested about the uh, uh, GPS CAT, here is our uh, repository. And all of the uh, examples you can find in, in this repository here. Okay. Okay, let's all. Thank you so much. Great talk. Thank you. So, um, because we have uh, almost one minute delay in the live stream, we will give people um, the chance to ask questions now. Uh, either if you're watching the live stream, please make sure to comment in the GitHub chat, or if you have a question here in the room, um, feel free to use the raise your hand feature so that I can see you have a question. Um, yeah, Chris, go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the talk. Um... I'm wondering, so you mentioned that uh, you need to extract the runtime code from the UL object in order to deploy it. Uh, is there a way you could uh, support the, the deploy routine that is written in UL or what, what is the reason for that? Oh, uh, actually, we, uh, because the, the generated UL contract is just like a, a runtime code and a deploy or a constructor part, they, they are two parts. Right, uh, I, I, I think I think there are two, two parts, and so if uh, because if you if you get the uh, give the SOL with the runtime code and the, the constructor code, the deploying code, we will just compile the runtime code just directly into the uh, web assembly by code. So you have no choice; you have no chance to see uh, uh, the LVIR inside of this runtime. So uh, if you want to do some research on uh, the runtime by ah, code, okay. just, just remove the outside part. That's yeah. not required for running it. It's just uh, if you want to see further details on it. Yes, yes. Ah, you, you, okay. If you want to run it, you have to, uh, of course, you have to uh, give the runtime code uh, and the uh, constructor yeah. all okay. and will be needed. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Okay, another question here, Muli. Oh, you're still muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Very, very, very nice talk. Can you elaborate a little bit about how much you save in particular? How much gas saving are you getting? Um... Uh, uh, sorry, can you, can you, uh, oh, oh, uh, I will say there are no, no, any, any benchmark or we, we doesn't, we doesn't calculate the, 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 
uh, gas reduced number here because um, in uh, I always say it's a very experimental. Uh, It, it will be its very uh, experimental stage. So uh, in this moment, uh, I believe they are they are also uh, don't have very uh, very strong or very complicated uh, uh, very complete of the uh, WebAssembly cost model. So we just uh, we just assume uh, we just say lots of the the, uh, the number there. So so uh, we don't have the real number. Sorry about that. Yes. You're muted again. Oh, sorry. So on the conceptual level, if you implemented this directly on the Yule, how much more difficult would it be? What are you getting actually from the LLVM as opposed to just running it on the Yule? Um, Is my question clear? Oh, um, uh, actually, I believe there's there's uh, different things because uh, why we choose the LVM framework because uh, it just like the uh, GCC that uh, there are several people and do lots of the uh, optimization research and creates lots of the optimization strategy layer. So. Uh, for us, it will be very difficult because we have to choose uh, which strategy is is uh, uh, which strategy is su suitable for the uh, UO. And then the second thing, we just pulled the, the same algorithm from the LVIR into the uh, UO optimizer. So uh, I don't. Uh, so if we can do lots of research on these parts, yes. We can port lots of the uh, uh, optimization from LVN uh, into the UO optimizer, but uh, I believe uh, uh, we should just just still uh, we just use the LVN framework and 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 just add lots of uh, analysis and optimization structure layer because uh, uh, it will have lots of things to do because uh, you have to. Uh, you have to analyze it and create lots of the uh, the information. So with those information, we can just do a more aggressive optimization. But you will take uh, I think we take too much time to to rebuild all of the uh, all of the things again on on optimizer. Yeah. 